So we did in the last class one problem uh, dealing with the stability. We saw how the condition gm greater than zero is. Um, it is um, it indicates the presence or absence of stability. Now we will do a couple of problems to make the whole concept clear. Um, the first one is it's very similar problem but just slightly different that is uh, you in this case you have a cone that is floating top up like this okay like this it's a cone so that is floating it doesn't matter how much of it is floating in or out that is uh, we I bring on a new term here which you do not know till now that is we say that when you are told that for example the free board the word is free board the meaning of that is the exact opposite of draft means it is the amount of region that is outside the water okay that is called a free board. So when you have a ship uh, you will have a draft the under underwater region and you will have a free board that is the above water region so just remember that word called free board okay now you are told that the free board of the uh, system of this body is F or FB okay this is the free board. So you can immediately derive this relation and let us say that this is a draft therefore FB is equal to H minus T where H is the total depth of the um, cone. Now the question is similar to what is done before you are asked what is the condition for the upright stability of this uh, system. Now the problem is similar. Um, so first of all this is just to do a couple of um, similar problems so that you know how to um, approach this thing. So first of course you apply there are two steps in this. The first step is always the application of the Archimedes principle and the second step is to derive gm so these are two steps that you need to follow okay in all these problems go through this this method these two steps first you apply archimedes principle then some mathematics might be required and then you do derive gm and you ha you know that by now you cannot get gm straight away you need all these parameters to get gm kb kg and bm because gm has no formula as such to get uh, gm so you have there are formulas and or methods to find KB where B is the center of buoyancy, KG where G is the center of gravity and BM known as the metacentric radius which is I by del. So from this you get GM okay. So we are uh, adopt this method here. First of all we apply the Archimedes principle that is we say that um, gamma let us say that gamma C is the uh, de, uh, specific gravity of the cone. 1 by 3 pi d square by 4 pi r square h this will give you the total weight of the cone right this is given balanced by the um, by the mass of water displaced which is equal to gamma w specific gravity of water into pi by 3 into h 4 into d square h minus d square fb. So this at any rate when you are doing the right hand side should be the volume of the water volume of the cone that is under the water. So in this case this is the volume that we need because we are doing the Archimedes principle this is the volume that we need. Now this volume just look here it is the total volume of the cone minus the volume of this cone that is what they have done here. This small d represents the diameter here okay this diameter like if you have the cone here you have a this is called the water plane area as you know. So this diameter is D okay. So um, 1 by 3 pi r square h the whole cone minus 1 by 3 pi r square h for the small cone will give you the total volume that is under that is what they have done here. This is the Archimedes principle. So this is the first step. So you have in a way completed something like one third of the problem okay if you know this this is the Archimedes principle. Now from this you get Fb is equal to gamma w minus gamma c by gamma w into d square h by d square just comes from the manipulation of this above equation and 
then this is something you might have to do in your problems that is you are applying the similarity principle we have all done in the previous problem also that is similarity principle is just saying that both of them represent the same angle so it will give you that d by d is equal to fb by h it's like last time we wrote it as h minus t by h so this time we can write it as fb by h fb is the free board which you see what it is okay now combining this these two equations you will get fb is equal to gamma w minus gamma c by gamma w whole power 1 by 3 h and this we can put it as beta therefore fb is equal to beta h so you get a solution you get a relation like this then therefore t is equal to h minus fb equals 1 minus beta into h okay this just comes directly now um, now the the diameter of the water plane section okay this is again from the similarity principle it is just this formula so d by d is equal to this so d is equal to capital d into fb by h and d by h we write it as beta i mean uh, fb by h fb by h we write it as beta so we get this beta d now um, Uh, now there are first thing we need now what do we have to calculate gm so to calculate gm we need three things kb first kg second and uh, gm uh, and bm right we need three things to calculate the gm so first we have to calculate kb by kb we mean the center of buoyancy of this figure you see this trapezium so we need the center of buoyancy of this trapezium now this is this might be a problem for you because um, i'm sure none of you will be remembering right now what is the centroid of a trapezium or so so what you have to do for this course at least is i want you to remember a couple of things you need to know first is the same thing whether it's the centroid or the center of buoyancy it's always uh, it's the same thing so um, i mean the formula is the same so what you need to remember is couple of things you need to i'll tell you write this down this definitely for the exam you have to remember okay so first thing is you have to get the center of gravity for a triangle of course rectangle i won't write straight forward very simple then for a trapezium so these two you have to know and similarly you need to know i what we call as a moment of inertia of you need to know the moment of so this center of gravity you should know from both sides 2 by 3 from one side 1 by 3 from the other side you have to know which side that you have to know then trapezium i'll tell you now this you just have to remember there is no other way then i or the moment of inertia similarly you have to know for a circle rectangle and for a triangle okay three things these three you remember and of course you need to remember a couple of things like volumes this also you might have forgotten volumes of a cone a pyramid a sphere and a cylinder such figures you just by heart it there is that's the only way so um, once you have this so here we need kb for the uh, trapezium this is the formula for centroid of a trapezium okay so there is no way to derive it or anything you just have to remember it um, here it's like this that is you are having a trapezium and one side is d one side is small d and the distance between them is t if you have this to be the uh, case then your the centroid of this region will be at this point okay this is the given by this now so this from this you get the value of kb for this trapezium so for the exam as i told you these things i won't give for this much okay if there is by any chance something extra then i'll give you but these things you have to memorize 
So, K B you get from this expression uh, in the above equation, then next you have to calculate, okay, let us calculate B m. So, we have calculated K B. Now, B m is again I by del, then um, so this I, it should be the I of what? I of I of what? Not submerged body. Water plane, what is it? It is a circle, okay. So, it is just the moment of inertia of that circle and for a circle it does not matter, but remember if you are doing for a some other body, if it is not a circle, if it is like for example, a triangle or a rectangle, so it means if it is a pyramid or something like this and if you are talking, we are most likely talking of tilting like this. So, you should be doing the moment of inertia about this axis. So, th that you have to look at your uh, some uh, some mathematics book, find out what that I is. I do not remember right now, but you just, you have to remember for a triangle. So, that is important. So, in this case, it just becomes I for a circle. I for a circle is very straightforward, pi d power 4 by 64. And for exam, do not come later saying, writing this like this, because this does not carry any marks. This is definitely wrong, okay. This is not the I. You have to have this water plane D. It does not make any sense if you put the capital D. It is completely wrong. Okay. So, this is pi d power 4 by 64. This is your I. Uh, of course, in this case, it will become pi beta power 4 d power 4 by 64 because D is equal to beta D, capital D. Now, once you have that, del, I am doing this so that everything these points are important like B m, what is that I, I of what? Similarly, del, what del is it? Del is actually the submerged volume. So, in these things there should not be a mistake. This uh, submerged volume, such things there should not be a mistake. Do not take the whole volume. You are talking about the submerged volume. So, this is again equal to, um, actually you can just do it, pi it actually comes to So, what you are doing here is this submerged volume, volume of this, okay. That actually brings to uh, mind you have to remember the volume of a, it is a trapezoid actually. Um, if you know the area of a trapezoid, you multiply it with the thickness, you will get the volume of the trapezoid, okay. But you might as well might, uh, study that also, trapezoid. It is like a rectangle, in, instead of a rectangle, you have a trapezium. So, trapezoid, you find out you these things. So, I will keep it here. Just please write this down. Do not uh, this you have to know this much, this much, mainly these things volumes of cone, pyramid, sphere, cylinder, and a trapezoid. Okay. So, once you have that, you get the uh, submerged volume of the and you get the del. And once you get the del, you can just apply Bm is equal to I by del. So, this formula is applied to get Bm. Now, Kg, remember what is Kg? Kg is the center of gravity of what? Whole body. It is not the Kg of the submerged portion or anything. It is Kg means it is the center of the whole body. So, if these things are clear, then you will not have any problems at all. Centroid of the whole body, okay. So, that is just a triangle, centroid of the triangle, it becomes uh, B by 3 from the bottom, uh, I mean the whole distance H by 3 from the bottom, yeah. So, Kg is equal to um, H by 3 and always take the coordinate system starting from the bottom. So, the keel is always 0, so H by 3 from the bottom and then you just apply Gm equals Kb plus Bm. Uh, minus kg. So, this is the usual formula again uh, you apply this of course, it, you you have got uh, got all these in terms of beta h d etc. You have that uh, those expressions you just uh, apply it and then you substitute g m greater than 0. This is a condition and you will get some condition that is if you are given the values of course, you can get the solution in something might be missing in that. For example, your d might be missing small d or capital D will be missing. So, you just solve for that using this condition. Now, you are asked what is the limiting wave value, you just put gm equal to 0 and solve for the limiting value. 
Okay, so this is this problem. It's very similar to the previous one. Now the next one is a little more complicated. This we have to do. So this is actually the simpler type of problems where it's just application. Next one you have to. Now suppose this is a particular kind of problem that is we call it a parallel par parallel pipetic barge. Parle it's called a, it's a parallel piped pipetic barge. The meaning of that is it's a, it's a rectangle. It's just a rectangular box actually. Okay, it's like this, like this. It's a rectangular box with uh, some thickness and uh, some length. So there is no slanting, no angle, nothing. It's just all 90 degrees. Now, in this case, you are asked. So initially you have this barge and you are told that this is a transverse view. Transverse view means I am looking like this. So transverse section, it is a transverse section. So this is B, this is B, the breadth of the barge. Uh, then uh, this is the water line W0, L0. Now um, this is the center line, center point and now the barge is tilting or inclining, healing, different words, the inclining, healing, it is different thing, okay. It is now healed to a different um, angle W1, L1. Now, okay, this is a triangle. Now, it is healed about its centroid. Remember the axiom that we have developed, if it heals about the centroid, there is no change in its uh, volume. Whatever volume comes out is equal to the water volume that goes in. It is healing like this such that whatever is coming in, it is going out, uh, coming out is going in. So the total volume that is submerged does not change, okay. Now this is like that. So what has happened here is uh, one volume has immersed, this region has immersed and this volume has come out, okay. Now let us call the centroid of this, so this is called a wedge, this. This is called a wedge, okay, and this is also a wedge. This is the wedge that uh, comes out, and this is the wedge that goes in. So, this is now let us call the centroid of this. Uh, let me call this region. Let us assume that this is the center of buoyancy. Center of buoyancy means the centroid of the volume, okay. Of that point is let us call it B0 or uh, BE, BE, B emerged, and this is the centroid of this wall uh, of this wedge that has uh, come out gone in so this is b i b m immersed so this is b i and this is b e now i'll just uh, give some dimensions so this is b then this is h this is h this is t now um, this is B0, which is the center of buoyancy of the whole system, whole body. This BE is the center of buoyancy of the wedge that has emerged. BI is the center of buoyancy, just the center of buoyancy of this, okay. It has nothing to do with the whole other part of the body, just this wedge. BI is the center of buoyancy of this wedge, BE is the center of buoyancy of this wedge and B0 is the center of buoyancy of the whole body capital B0. Now this B0 as you can imagine will be at T by 2. It is the centroid of this okay which will be at T by 2 always. It is it has to be because it is the centroid and the volume this total volume length is T so it is at T by 2. Now next thing you also you, you, will, you should know is what will be this distance? B by? Why? Is it a rectangle? It is a it is a wedge. It is a triangle. So what will be its centroid? 
It is B by 3. Uh, B by 3. No, no, uh, wait. Actually, it is B by 2 into 2 by 3, 2 by 3, right? Yeah, it is B by 3 only. I am saying it comes like this, B by 2 into 2 by 3. It is not, it is not because it is B by 3 from, it is one third of this distance, which is one third of B by 2, uh, two third of B by 2. So, so it is correct, this is B by 3 only, correct. So this is B by 3. So this distance is B by 3, that is what, you do not get confused, do not say B by 2 because it is not a triangle, it, I mean it is not a rectangle, it is a triangle. So again B i, I repeating it, is the centroid of this triangle, this wedge. Okay, the centroid of the wedge will be at b by 3 from this point, and similarly here, this will be b by 3. Or let us call this minus b by 3. This distance is minus, and that distance is positive, that is plus b by 3. Now, um, if this is b by 2, what will be this? Let us say that this is healed through an angle phi. What will be this? Yes, someone has told me that. That's correct. B by two, tan, tan phi. B by two, tan phi. So this distance will be b by two, tan phi. Okay. Similarly, this distance, this will be b by two, tan phi. And what will be this height? Um, okay, I'll come to that. Now, first we have to um, do a couple of things. We will make a table like this. We need this figure and uh, we will make a table here like this. Uh, before I do that, there is one definition that is we, we have already defined what is the meta center, means it will come somewhere here. Okay, in this figure, it is already drawn, but because it tells the center of buoyancy moves to this new point and when you draw a vertical from there, where it meets the old vertical, it is called the meta center. Now, um, uh, meta center, okay, uh, this distance, this height is usually what we call as meta center. Uh, this height, meta center is always measured in the vertical. Now, another thing that comes here is uh, transverse, this I did not see, one minute, transverse center of buoyancy. That is, uh, this distance, the center of buoyancy has two coordinates in this figure. It will have a vertical coordinate and a um, transverse coordinate, okay. The transverse distance of the center of buoyancy from the center line, the transverse distance of the center of buoyancy from the center line is known as the transverse center of buoyancy, okay. When you generally say center of buoyancy, it means the point and of course, in most cases, it actually represents the vertical distance, means this height. But this is a particular word, TCB, which it actually represents this transverse distance. Again, transverse distance is a y coordinate always. So, when you have a ship like this, this is the transverse, this is the y coordinate, this is the longitudinal, this is the x coordinate, and this is the vertical z coordinate. So, TCB is known as a transverse center of buoyancy. So when you are trying to find the transverse center of buoyancy, the meaning of that is you are trying to find this distance. Means if this is B0, initially the transverse center of buoyancy of this is 0 because it is at the exact center, okay. So the ship is like this and it is not healed. When it is not inclined at all, it is not healed at all. Its center of buoyancy is here, B0. It is exactly at the vertical, middle. So it is 0. Later, when the ship heals, you have seen in that figures, B0 will shift like this then it will have a transverse center of buoyancy. Now this problem, the question is to find the transverse center of buoyancy and the vertical center of buoyancy. Means what is your horizontal distance of this B0 and what is, how much has it gone up as B0. So that is the problem. Now how do you find out the center of buoyancy, both of them, transverse, you always follow this method, it is uh, less prone to mistakes. So you make a table like this.
this TCB is the capital TCB only. You know that to find a centroid, you need to find the moment at any rate because it is the sum of the moments divided by the total area or volume, okay. In this case, volume. So, we are trying to find the moment of volume and divide it by the total volume, okay. So, first let us consider the weight. Uh, in the initial case, that is before healing, at, uh, before healing means the body has not inclined at all. What is the volume? It is L into B into T. Remember, it is not the total volume. This is the L right here, submerged volume, submerged volume. So, it is L into B into T. This you know, right? Length into breadth into draft. Now, transfer center of buoyancy is 0. Transfer center of buoyancy is 0. So, the moment is moment by moment we mean volume into transfer center of buoyancy or column 2 into column 3, okay. This is also 0 here, okay. Now, the second one is the second one I will write here in de detail. That is, second one is let us consider the uh, submerged wedge, this one. The wedge means it is just that triangle. Okay, you are not considering the whole body here, you are just considering that triangular wedge. So, it is the triangular wedge submerged. Um, now, the qu first question is what is its volume? This is here, What is this is the triangular wedge and what is its volume? What will be its volume? It is the volume of that, first you have to find the area of the triangle, multiply it with L, that will give you the volume of that wedge, means it is this area, area this triangle, okay, that wedge, that triangle here into that volume, that whole length of the ship or of that box, this is a, uh, it is called a parallel, that box barge, it is called a box barge actually. So, um, so the volume, uh, the area of a triangle is given by, okay, it will be this distance is b by 2 tan phi, um, b by 2 tan phi into half base into altitude, half base is, this is, this is the base, half b by 2 into, right, correct, half base into altitude, half base is b by 2, this is b by 2 into altitude is b by 2 tan phi, I think it is clear, okay. So, this becomes b square tan phi by 8, okay. So, this you have to write here, b square tan phi by 8, huh? ah, into L, yes, that is a volume, into L, yes, L b square tan phi by 8. Now, and this is your transverse center of, what is the TCB of this wedge? B by 3. Let us call this distance, that also another point you have to note, you are, remember you are putting this to be the um, center of coordinates, if you put this to be the center of coordinates, then you put this as positive, this has to be become uh, put as negative. So, when you say this is B by 3, this distance when you are putting in that table, it should become minus B by 3. So, you should not forget that, otherwise your answer will be wrong. Actually, you can see, if your answer is wrong, I will tell you. Um, now, this is B by 3 is your TCB and your moment will be the product LB cubed tan phi by 8, no, A by 8, 24, LB cubed tan phi by 24, just multiply the submerged volume with TCB that gives you the moment. Now, your next question is, I mean next part is the volume of the emerged part. This region is immersed. Now, I want to find the, uh, find the uh, moment of this emerged region, okay, this wedge. So, we have taken this wedge now, we have taken this, we have taken this wedge. Now, we need to take this wedge, this region, okay. Now, that is actually very simple because it is very similar to this, there is no difference. You, you see here, submerged volume is again same thing, but it is negative, okay. So, minus LB square tan phi by 8, this is again minus b by 3, so this will become positive again, L b cubed tan phi by 24, okay. Now, as I told you how to find if there is a mistake, see now you find out the total volume here, uh, means the total body, 
when you add these two, okay, uh, what will you get? It has to become zero. That's the way to check. It means this is very simple. There are only two, one wedge and another wedge. When you have, let's say, many many shape, many bodies, you, or you have to divide it into many bodies, it becomes very complicated. Make sure that the total volume is always LBT. Means you add these three. It's always LBT. The one that has immersed, the volume immersed is equal to the volume submerged. So these two will always sum up to zero, and therefore your total volume should always be LBT. So in this table, just sum this up to make sure that is what you are getting. Now the total moment is obviously the sum of these two. So this will be LB cubed tan phi by 12. Okay. Now how will you find the total TCB of the system? This is the means this is here you will get the TCB of this two wedges together. How will you get that? It is just a moment. You divide the total moment by the total volume. What have you done? You have actually done moment uh, of the Im emerged plus moment of the immersed divided by the total volume. This will give you the total distance, total TCB rather, net TCB. I have introduced no new formula here. This is just the formula that says if you want to calculate the centroid, centroid position is given by moment, total moment, moment of one section plus moment of another section plus moment of all the sections together basically divided by the total volume. That will give you the uh, centroid, centroid of that volume. Now that formula we are using, so TCB you will get here, just put it here, this TCB will become LB cubed tan phi by 24 divided by the total volume LBT, LBT is again the total volume. Now you just divide this, this will become T square tan phi by 12T. So this is one of the, right? Mm. What? Ah, by 12, yes. Not 24, yes. LB cube tan phi by 12 divided by LBT, yes. So it will become B square tan phi by 12T. Now this is one half of the problem. You are asked to find out what is the transfer center of buoyancy. So now you have got it, okay? That form, this method. This is for a simple case. Now, couple of things is um, I won't give you problems where you have to do the. Uh, I mean, there is a change in the whole volume itself. That becomes very complicated. Means whatever is coming out will be equal to whatever is going in for all your problems. So you will just have this particular kind of problem. Of course, the shape might be different. Such things might be different, but this is the method of doing it. So this gives you the transfer center of buoyancy, b square tan phi by 12t. Now you also are asked to find out what is the vertical center of buoyancy. Means you have to find for the new B, fi final B, what is its vertical coordinate? How much far is it from the keel? So you are asked to find, this also you are asked to find. I'll need this figure again. Um, okay. Now we make we have to make a similar table to what we have done pre previously. Same thing. So um, your problem here is to find the VCB, note it is written like this, VCB, vertical center of buoyancy, the other one is small TCB, cent transverse center of buoyancy. So you need to find both the Y and the Z, this is your Z part. Um, the method is the same. So as you can see, the important thing in this figure is to, uh, I mean, in first thing you is to draw this figure properly, otherwise you won't get your concept correctly. So this 
you draw the figure first properly with the dimensions like B, T and everything. Then and the thing that will determine the answer is basically getting these things correct. This is B by 2, this is B by 2 tan phi, this is B by 3. Similarly, what will be this distance? What will be this distance? It will be B by 6 tan phi, exactly. It will be half of, I mean 1 by 3 of this distance, B by 6 tan phi. So in a way, if you get this correct, then the problem is very straightforward now. So this is the, what is, that is actually the vertical coordinate or the vertical center of buoyancy of that wedge. So you have a vertical center of buoyancy for that wedge, this wedge. You have a vertical center of buoyancy for this wedge, which will be negative, okay. And you will have the vertical center of buoyancy for the whole system. That is your question. Now, first you have the whole initial with before it is, uh, the whole, before the whole thing is inclined. So the volume is again LBT, vertical center of buoyancy is at 0, 0. Um, then submerged, the volume is again the same, this is the vo volume that is submerged, we have done it last time, in the previous table we did this, okay, by 8 and this you just said what is VC, uh, VCB of that wedge, you have said that it is B by 6 tan phi, okay, yeah. For which one? Uh, for the whole body. Actually, that is correct. It's not zero. It's it's wrong here, written wrongly here, you are right, it is T by 2, it is not 0, it is actually the centroid of that uh, volume that is submerged, so it is correct, that is T, T by 2. Now, uh, so make the correction in the book, it is correct, it is T, T by 2. Um, so, B by 6 tan phi, now you multiply this, you will get the moment, L B cube tan square phi by 8 into 3 into 2, 8, 8 into 6 basically, okay, what, ah, then moment won't be 0, L B into um, T square by 2, okay. So this is the submerged, now the emerged will be just negative in sign, this volume will become negative minus L B square tan phi by 8. Um, vertical center of buoyancy will be minus B by 6 tan phi, yeah. Actually that is a that is a good point, do it that means they have taken this to be 0 and they have done the problem, it does not matter. If you do it, the answer will be different but remember your answer will be based on the coordinate system at the bottom, this will be based on coordinate system at the center, it does not matter. So in this problem, since they have done it, we will uh, follow the same. So you will get VCB as minus B by 6 tan phi, but it does not matter. When you are doing the problem, you can do it the other way also. You can put it there. What, what one? VCB of the first body, this is minus T by 2, you are saying. Okay, actually they have put it as 0, that is a mistake. Uh, it should be minus T, minus T by 2, as it should be the center of the volume, yes. Correct, it should be minus T by 2 and this will be uh, therefore minus. Then um, therefore um, the emerge volume is this, so this is LB cube by L cube, again same thing, tan square phi by 8 into 6 and the total change is therefore the submerged plus emer uh, the submerged plus what has come emerged. So that will be given by L B cube tan square phi by three into eight. 
okay by 3 into 8 okay so this is the net want moment net change in moment due to the coming out and going in okay the volumes going out and coming in so this is net change in moment net change in moment divided by the net volume net volume is again lbt because the whatever has gone in has come out so lbt this should give you your change in vcb give you net vcb Okay, they have not given the value here, but I think we can do it quickly. It is, it will be b cube, tan, no, b square, tan square phi by 24 t, I think. Okay. So, this will be your VCB. And just to note that this will be the distance from their centroid, from their zero. If you do it the other way, you will get the distance from your center. Just just get that uh, once you know that clearly then it's okay it doesn't matter where you choose the center center um, well the advantage with this is that um, okay in many cases it is done like this means where, wherever it is healed it takes it as a centroid but in some some of the other problems most most of the other problems you take this to be the keel to be the zero and go about it doesn't matter it's up to you okay for the problem whichever way you want you do it but just get this these things clear the value should be correct the volume should be correct and that whatever is the origin you the distance from that origin to that point should be correct so if you just write clearly in your answer script uh, where you have taken the origin it doesn't matter so you get the vcb now you are ending up with the uh, the coordinate of the center of buoyancy becomes no no we are change, finding the change in moment that is the initial moment the change in moment the change in moment is what is submerged minus what has come out it doesn't matter what the old moment is that let it be there okay then so the the way it is y is given by so this is what you are getting b square by t tan phi and z is one this is just a solution to that equation i mean solution to that tables two tables b square by t tan square phi so what you have is you are you are seeing that your b that is the center of buoyancy moves such that y is given by this equation and z is given by this equation if the body heals by an angle phi now we always say something that is we call it a b curve yes so we have to add initial vcb plus this change we'll give you the position okay. of the new b yeah, to where is the new vcb initial plus change okay initial okay they they have here as zero that's why they haven't added it yes uh, the cent initially it should be at minus t by 2 okay let's do this so here you have this to be so their origin is here okay this is their origin 0 so here initially it is minus t by 2 so um, this is an initial vcb so your new will be the distance from this that's what you are saying it, so it's always minus t by 2 plus this is that what um, minus t by 2 plus 1 by 24 b square by t tan square phi yes it should be given like this actually z corner um, that will give you the position of the center of uh, buoyancy of the vertical coordinate of the center of buoyancy <laughs> correct actually when you are doing this you will have to correct the book entirely because that is minus t by 2 okay then now um, we uh, we have to um, what exactly do we mean by b curve that is it is this that is the um, the y and z is called the b curve now what we can do is you make it one equation you have an equation you know like like f of x y is equal to f of x you have an equation like this this is what you call as a curve basically now we can put it in this format so um, 
what you do is you remove this phi from both the equations. You can square this and um, becomes a little more, you will have to do it like this. This is your z now, okay. So it is z plus t by 2 will be given by 1 by 24 b square by t tan, tan square phi, tan square phi and y is given by 1 by 12 b square by t tan phi. So I am going to square the y, so y square 1 by this squared 4 squared and you divide, you remove the phi from the two equations and you will get again you won't get this this is a diff, this is not correct so you will get an equation between y uh, z and y okay that is known as the equation of the b curve um, now you can always do similarly you have um, you can do it like this there is one more thing that you can derive from this b curve that is you have now an equation for z equals something as a function of phi, right? You have one equation and y is equal to something into function of phi. You have two equations here. What you could do is first do this dz by d phi. You do calculate this dz by d phi. You also calculate d square z by d phi square. Similarly, you calculate dy by d phi, okay? And you find d square y by d phi square find these things, calculate these things, four of these, then you can calculate one more thing that is you can calculate the radius of curvature of the B curve. Um, now there is a formula for radius of curvature, you would most likely be knowing it from geometry itself. No, like this square power 3 by 2. I think, have you come across this? I think you should have done, no? You would have, you will be knowing this. So, this, this is how you find out the radius of curvature of a curve. So, at any point, so this r you calculate what you what, what are we doing here what do you, what do you mean by the radius of curvature that is so you have this box and the body is now so initially this is the water line and the body has healed like this into new water line w1 l1 okay and um, the radius here it was b initially here b0 okay this was b and then it went to this point B, B1 and this, so by the radius, this curve, B0, B1 curve, how B0 varies is what you are calling as a B curve. That is how your center of buoyancy keeps moving from B0 to B1 as phi keeps changing. As the body keeps inclining or healing, the B0, that is the center of buoyancy, starts shifting from this vertical point to this B1 or rather it keeps moving because more volume is coming in one side, the, it will slowly move in that direction, center of buoyancy. The curve of that is known as the B curve, that is what we have called here as B curve and this is what you are calling as the radius of curvature, this, this distance, okay. That distance is what you are calling as radius of curvature of the B curve and that value is given by this expression. Now. Um, of course, we can also find this BM0, this is directly an application of the formula, this is I by del, I is the, this is one point I want to make, there is BM0 means you are talking about um, the metacentric radius given the body has not inclined. That is the meaning of 0. 0 means the body has not inclined so far. So it is remaining vertically like this and um, this this area you have to have. That is the area that gives you the, uh, the uh, center of uh, I. It is the area that gives you the moment of inertia, I. That is 
this is basically i by del del is of course obvious lbt i i'm just trying to show why, why it you know why it's lb cube by 12 because which axis it's rotating like this it because of that it's lb cube by 12 now now it is inclined let's say now what will be its bm it's not bm0 in fact it's actually bm5 it means the body has inclined by an angle phi now what is its bm it will be the new i divided by lbt what has changed here your b it's not b anymore it that's that's that is it is now i'll show this figure maybe this figure is, will help that is this is b right when it was vertical this distance was b but when it is tilted like this this distance is not b anymore it is slightly more than b that is b by cos phi it's just it's that just uh, uh, algebra it gives you b by cos phi cube by 12 divided by lbt okay just know this one this is the new uh, metacentric radius so bm0 is actually bm0 is very straightforward bm5 is slightly more complicated because it tilts and the distance is no longer b actually it's slightly more than b it gives you bm5 now um, okay now you will see that if you calculate i should probably go to the old book to see that you will see that the radius of curvature which we calculated for this b curve will start becoming tending towards this value of bm5 okay. so um, uh, that we'll do later um, since the time is up okay then um, So this is how you get your B curve. Um, now this problem. Now actually we have we have to go to another problem. Is he in this class? No. Then. All right. Now um, it's a different problem. I don't think we have time now. So we have a uh, two or three more problems. I'll just uh, end with what is um, meant by a, that prop. Just the one thing you have to know for that problem that is, just know this word. Just know this is a world. It's there are two things that come up in this problem. This is uh, this is also of course naval architecture only. That is, it's not ships. It's not really ships as such. We call them offshore platforms. so in general we are we are now having a problem you will this will be de dealing in much detail you will be dealing with what are known as offshore platforms these uh, like oil rigs is an offshore platform means these are not ships really they are they do not move in the ocean they are fixed more or less and um, you study different stability aspects related to them their hydrostatics and stability concepts are the same as that for ships because it's after all floating in water only but they have moorings and slightly different now this is one problem related to that and one of one type of an offshore platform is called a semi submersible and related to semi submersible we have these things called pontoons we'll actually do that in detail in the next class tomorrow morning we'll do that okay all right thank you mm -hmm.